The Liberals have absolutely zero proof that their continued gun grabs and attacks on Canada's law-abiding firearms community will even be effective in stemming violent crime. But as I'm sure you know, that's never been the objective here, has it? Justin Trudeau has had a dangerous and unfair gun control agenda from the very beginning. Trudeau just needed the right tragedy to stand upon. For example, Trudeau used the largest mass killing in Canadian history in Nova Scotia done by someone who is not possessing his firearms illegally to kick it all off through an undemocratic stroke of a pen and ordering counsel. Trudeau started banning thousands of Canadian rifles and shotguns from the very people who had jumped through all the hoops and done everything right to own them. Then very recently, standing on the tragedy of a school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, for some reason, Justin Trudeau decided to grandfather out handgun ownership here in Canada. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. If you want to stand with our lawful Canadian gun owners, please consider signing our petition at handsoffourguns.ca. The government's own data shows that just a statistical rounding error of murders in this country are committed by legally obtained handguns. 13 legally obtained handguns were used in murders across the country in 2019 out of 131 murders. When we look at the 2020 data, so that's the year that Justin Trudeau decided to come after Canadian gun owners, there were only 11 handguns that were legally obtained, used in murders across the country out of 137 murders. The guns used in crimes are often stolen from lawful firearms owners, you know, the people who are ultimately the victims of the crimes, or trafficked across a porous border that the Liberals refuse to address for social justice reasons. I want to show you this video of Conservative MP Dane Lloyd at the Public Safety Committee earlier this week. It's incredible. Lloyd was questioning the Assistant Deputy Minister of Public Safety. He wanted the Assistant Deputy Minister to show his work to show proof that Trudeau's attacks on the two plus million licensed Canadian firearms owners will do anything, a single thing, to stem violent crime. You know, when you make a decision that will result in the confiscation of lawfully obtained property from completely innocent people, you'd think you might have your ducks in a row so that you could say that this infringement on their civil liberties was somehow justified. But these people can't even make the feeble, if it just saves one life, it's worth it to do these things to you argument. They don't even know that little. But don't take my word for it. Just look at this. I think you'll agree with the principle that correlation does not equal causation. And that's why I was so astonished by what the minister said in his testimony, that the increase in legal registered firearm owners is causing an increase in gun violence in Canada. Do you, Mr. Dacobab, have any analysis or evidence to support that claim? I'm not here to defend or not what the minister is saying. But do you have frankly. that evidence? Uh, what we have as information is the increased number in the last 10 years of owners in Canada with handguns over, I believe, 50%, Kelly, if I'm not mm -hmm. wrong, and the increased number of stolen handguns that are raised our attention. I don't have the number in front of me, but what I could tell you is that's the data that we have available. Okay. Is there is an So it's not a direct connection that because there's more legal firearm owners means there's more, therefore there is more I can't gun tell you if it's a direct connection or not. There's no but, evidence but, from public safety. Thank you. Well, uh, there is a, oh, Deputy sorry. Commissioner Larkin, do you have any evidence to support that claim? Through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, Mr. Lloyd, again, we're focused on initiatives that will support public safety. Um, again, we don't have the correlation. We don't have that data. Okay. Um, we work within the legislative framework that is provided to us. Um, but thank again, you. our I approach... I just wanted to know if you had the data, but thank you. Uh, Ms. Paquette, do you have that data? No, I don't have that data. Okay, so I guess the minister was speculating there. Now, even if you don't care about firearms whatsoever, and maybe you don't even care about scapegoating... 
innocent people for the crimes of others. And maybe you don't care about property rights one bit. You might care about how much this is all going to cost with maybe zero benefit whatsoever. Because you can't just confiscate property without reimbursing the owner. So far, according to the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, the gun buyback program, which is an absolutely ridiculous name to describe forcibly confiscating something that you never owned in the first place. Well, it's going to cost upwards of 80 million bucks and you just know that's going to balloon way north of that. And before a single door has been kicked in by the RCMP to snatch guns from the law-abiding people of this country, the Office of the Firearms Buyback Secretariat, the bureaucrats who are going to take your guns and then pay you whatever they think they're worth, not what they're actually worth. Well, that office has cost the taxpayer nearly four million bucks. 2.1 million spent on salaries and 1.6 million spent on operations. This is going to be at least a billion dollar boondoggle that even if you don't care about guns, Canada cannot afford. And as public safety admitted, they don't even know if it's going to work. But I know it won't work. Just look at Chicago. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. To sign our petition calling on the federal government to stop wasting precious and scarce police resources on the most law-abiding segment of the Canadian population, gun owners, please go to handsoffourguns.com.